Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 8.5, which is the properties of logarithms. Now, hopefully, at this point, we realize that uh, exponents and logarithms are inverse operations. And like any inverse operation, such as addition, we have the inverse of subtraction, they follow the same rules. Multiplication and its inverse of division also follow the same rules. So if we're dealing with the properties of logarithms, essentially we have to know the properties of its inverse operation exponents. If we understand our rules of exponents, our uh, properties of logarithms will be fairly similar and hopefully uh, understandable. So let's first take a look at our product rule for exponents. <clears throat> if we have two bases that are the same, we identify the bases are, in this case, a, and we're multiplying them, our product rule of exponents says we would add the exponents. So I can rewrite it simply by adding the exponents m and n. Now, if I have a logarithm of base a, I've identified the base to be a, if I have a product of its argument, since a logarithm is essentially an exponent, what I can do is say, what am I doing to the exponent? I am adding two different exponents when I have a product. When I have a product, I add the exponents. So what I can do is I can split this logarithm up, log of base a of m plus log of base a of n. So when I see a product of the argument, I know it was the addition of two logs. Just like when I saw the product here, I know it's the addition of the two exponents. So let's say we have something of this example here. We have log base 2 of 8 times 64. Since this is a product, I can rewrite it. And sometimes this is a tool that we use to simplify a logarithm. I have log base 2 of 8 plus, because of the product rule, log base 2 of 64. Now, maybe we identify 8 to be a perfect power of 2. This would be 2 cubed. Well, log base 2 of 8 basically asks, 2 to what power would give me 8? Well, this is 3. So I can simplify this logarithm by evaluating it to be the value of 3. Now, what if I don't recognize 64 to be some power of 2? I can actually expand this further. I know that 64 is 8 times 8. Well, if we expand this rule even further, log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of 8. Well, if this log base 2 of 8 gave me 3, then this log base 2 of 8 will also be 3. And this log base 2 of this factor, 8, will be 3. And when we simplify it, 3 plus 3 plus 3 equals 9. So hopefully we see how we can use the product rule to factor the argument down and simplify it to something we can work with. 3 plus 3 plus 3 equals 9 is pretty simple if we can evaluate these logs and break them down. Let's look at the quotient rule of exponents. If we have two values being divided that have the same base, we would subtract their powers. So this would be a to the m minus n. And we always recall it's always, for our quotient rule, the top minus the bottom. So I have the top power minus the bottom power. Well, in a logarithm, if the argument contains division, well, since we subtracted our powers here, in the quotient rule for logarithms, we're going to subtract the logs. And it's always the top minus the bottom. So we can break a log up to be log base a of m minus log base a of n, the top minus the bottom. Let's look at this example here. Now, 76 is not a factor of 13, so I can't simplify. But that would be the first thing I'd want to do. If I can simplify the argument, I would do so. But we see 76 and 13 do not have any common factors. So I can rewrite this as the log of base a. I identified the base to be a, so I won't be able to simplify this because I don't know what a is, 
of the top minus log base A of the bottom. So we're able to break this up into uh, simplified logs where we don't have to uh, do any division or multiplication in any of these examples here. So we just use that rule to break our logs into smaller values. All right, let's look at another rule of exponents that we should be familiar with. And this is called the power rule. If I have a base to a power raised to a power, the uh, power rule says that I would multiply the exponents, r times m, multiply the exponents. Well, if I have the log of some base and the argument is raised to a power, and be aware that this is the argument being raised, not the entire logarithm. Because a logarithm is an exponent, I can apply the product rule. Multiply the power times the power. Well, a logarithm is a power, so I get r times log base b of x. One way you can think about it when you see it in this form is just bring this r out front. So let's look at this example here. I have log base 4 of the fifth root of 4. And if we recall, a logarithm says, to what power do I raise this base to get this argument? Well, what the first thing I'd want to do is rewrite any radical as a rational exponent. Well, the fifth root is the 1 fifth power. And now we can see it's very similar to this here. I can essentially bring this out front, multiply the power times the logarithm. So I get 1 fifth log base 4 of 4. And if we recall in a previous section, this is one of our rules of logarithms that we can simplify. Well, 4 to what power is 4? It would be 4 to the first. This reduces to 1. So if this is 1, 1 fifth times 1 is 1 fifth. So what power do I raise 4 to get the fifth root of 4? The 1 fifth power. And we saw that right here because this reduced to 1. We can think about it as, well, reducing to 1. The only value left would be 1 fifth, 1 times 1 fifth, which is 1 fifth. OK, <clears throat> sometimes we'll be asked to write a logarithm as the sum, difference, or multiples of logs. Essentially, what we're going to do in this example is combine all of the rules that we've seen so far. So if I want to write this as the sum, difference, or multiples of logs, I want to identify, well, what, what am I doing within this uh, argument here that's in parentheses. Well, I notice I have division, and I have some values that are raised to power. So the first thing I want to do is simplify inside those parentheses, simplify my argument. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is look at this square root, and I'm going to write it as the 1 half power. Change any radicals to rational exponents. So we have log base 3 of x over x to the fourth, y to the fourth, raised to the 1 half power, because that is a square root. Now, using my rules of exponents, I can just distribute that. Half of 4 would be 2. Half of 4 would be 2. So I'd have x squared, y squared. Let me write that down here. Log base 3 of x over x squared y squared. Now I'm ready to, uh, well, I can simplify a little bit more. This x can reduce one of these x's. Or we can think of it as our uh, quotient rule of exponents. 1 minus 2 would be a negative 1. 1x one in the denominator, that negative exponent. So now that we've simplified the argument, now we can use the uh, some difference or quotient of logarithms to rewrite this into separate terms. So here, log base 3 of 1, I'm going to take the top minus the bottom, my quotient rule. Log base 3 of 1 minus log base 3 of the bottom, which is x, y squared. Now, there's still some things I can do within here because 
I still have a product here. So I'm going to rewrite this portion and simplify this. Well, log base 3 of 1, hopefully we remember that rule from the previous video, anything to the 0 power is 1. So what do I raise 3 to get 1? This would be 0. This reduces to 0. 0 minus something does not change it. So I simplify as I go. Now I'm going to reapply those rule, the product rule here. I have a negative, and I'm going to use parentheses, log base 3 of x uh, plus log base 3 of y squared. And I'm going to close those parentheses because this is a negative of this quantity. So it's a negative of the quantity. Even when I split it up, I have to remember, if that negative's out front, it applies to the entire thing. So I use parentheses because it applies to the entire thing. Now I notice I still have this power here. So I can bring it out front using the power rule of logarithms. When you have an argument raised to a power, you multiply it times the log. And I'm going to write the final answer right here. Log base 3 of x and 2 log base 3 of y. But it was negative times the quantity. So I'm going to distribute that negative. That makes both of these logs negative. This is the final of that logarithm when we simplify it down. And if we notice, having this argument, which looks rather complex, and x over the square root of x to the fourth, y to the fourth, now we just have negative log base 3 of x minus 2 log base 3 of y. So we've simplified it down to the sum or difference or multiples of logs. Here we have the difference of logs. They're both negative. And this one is a multiple, two of these logs. All right, let's look at this example here. And I'm just going to uh, erase so that we're not uh, interfering with our view here. I have log base 5 of the quantity x to the 6th, y to the 7th over 29z. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify within the uh, parentheses. And I notice I can't simplify anything that's within here. So I can go right straight to writing the sum, difference, or multiples of logs. So I have the top log base 5 of x to the 6th, y to the 7th, minus the bottom log base 5 of 29z. Now I'm going to assess each one of these separately. I notice, well, I have a product rule here because I'm multiplying x to the 6th, y to the 7th. So I can rewrite that as log base 5 of x to the 6th plus log base 5 of y to the 7th. So because this is a product, I split it up. Now I have minus log base 5 of 29z. This is also a product, but I'm going to be careful with this negative because it's minus the quantity log base 5 of 29 plus log base 5 of z. But since they're both negative, I'm going to distribute that negative right now. It would be negative this quantity. Well, if I distribute it, it means both of these values are negative, because both of these values were initially in the denominator for that argument. And if we simplify it a little bit further, I notice, well, I still have powers on these two. So I have multiples of logs. If I bring these powers out front using the power rule, my fa final answer, I'm going to write it right here. We're going to have 6 log base 5 of x plus 7 log base 5 of y minus log base 5 of 29 minus log base 5 of z. Now, this was a long and drawn out explanation, but we didn't skip any steps. We worked it through, and we got 6 log base 5 of x plus 7 log base 5 of y minus log base 5 of 29 minus log base 5 of z. So this quantity is the same value as this quantity. We just broke it down into smaller logarithms. So maybe if we know what x is, we could evaluate this and multiply it by 6. If we knew what y was, we could evaluate this and multiply it by 7. 
And this is maybe something we want to use in a calculator. And we'll explore that a little deeper when we get to it. And maybe if we knew z, we could simplify this and then just take the sum or difference of the values we find. All right, let's look at another example. Well, what if we have the sum, difference, or multiples of logs to start with, and we want to write it into a single logarithm? Essentially, what we're about to do is the opposite of what we just did. We're going to do the opposite. We want to write this as a single logarithm instead of being the sum or difference or multiples of logs. Well, the first thing I want to do is identify what operations do I have in between my logarithms. Well, this says subtraction. When I have subtraction, I should think quotient rule. So I'm going to rewrite it as the log base 2 of the first one over the second one. And now I want to simplify my argument. Now, in the last examples, the first thing I did was simplify my argument. When I'm writing it as a single log, the last thing I do is simplify the argument. Well, I see that this is a quadratic, and it does factor to x plus 6, x plus 2. And now I can simplify by reducing. The factor of x plus 6 reduces the factor of x plus 6. It reduces to 1. So I have 1 over the remaining factor of x plus 2. Now, you notice we had this here. We were able to simplify it to a single logarithm. And now I could say, maybe from this point, I could break it up again, like we did in the previous examples, and say, well, log base 2 of 1 is 0. 2 to what power? Let's actually do that for review here. Log base 2 of 1 minus log base 2 of the bottom here, which is x plus 2. And now I can simplify. Log base 2 of 1 is 0, while 0 minus anything simplifies to the negative log base 2 of x plus 2. So we went from this, which looked maybe intimidating, to something like this. Not so bad. I just have one value that, if I knew it, I could plug it in and maybe simplify that logarithm. Let's look at this example here. We have 1 15th of the quantity log base 2 of x minus log base 2 of y. Well, order of operations says work within parentheses. So I'm going to go within these parentheses first and identify why I have subtraction. So I want a quotient rule. 1 15th times the quantity log base 2 of x over y. Quotient rule says I'm going to divide their arguments. Now that I have, and these parentheses are no longer necessary because I only have one quantity, 1 15th times log base 2 of x divided by y. Now I can use the power rule. Now, before, when we had a power to the argument, we brought it out front. Well, if I'm writing it as a single logarithm, maybe I want to bring this power in. So we're undoing the power rule, right? So if I bring that value in, I get log base 2 of the quantity x over y to the 1 15th power. And I would leave it as a rational exponent, even though I could write it as the 15th root of x over y. But we're going to leave that as a rational exponent, which I recommend. All right, two last examples, and these are for you to try. Here we have the log base 2 of the quantity a squared times the square root of b all over c. Write this as the sum, difference, and multiples of logs. And then here we have 1 half log base 3 of x minus 2 log base 3 of y. Write this as a single logarithm. So expand this out to the sum or difference in, or multiples and uh, com combine this to a single logarithm. So that would be for your practice. This has been section 8.5. Thank you for watching.